Previously, we've talked about how to generate output, specifically using the print function, and we've seen how to perform various arithmetic operations. Now what we want to talk about is obtaining input using the input function. And this function takes a single string argument. That string serves as a prompt. It's printed, and then Python waits for the user to type something and hit the enter or return key. Once the user hits enter or return, whatever they typed is returned by that function as a string. And what we mean by returned by the function will be a little bit more clear in a moment. So let's consider an example. We write the function name input followed by parentheses. Within those parentheses, we write a string which serves as the prompt. So let's go with what is your name. Now when we hit return, that prompt will be printed and Python will sit and wait for the user to type something. And at this point, we're both the programmer and the user. I hit return, we see that prompt, and the cursor is waiting at the end of that. For a name, let's go with rows. Now when we hit return, that input what the user typed is treated as a string and that string just got echoed back to us. We see it enclosed in quotes. Now what happened is our input was taken by the input function and bundled up as a string and then returned by the function. So on the previous line it's like the input function went away and what was left there was whatever the user typed. So the user had typed rows and then at the interactive prompt in idle, when we hit return after entering a string, that string is just echoed back to us. So that isn't very useful at this point, just to have the name echoed back to us. It would be more useful if we assigned that name, whatever the user entered, to some identifier, to some variable name. So let's go with name is assign the value, where name is equal to, We'll call the input function and we'll say the prompt is what is your name as before. Now when we hit return, uh, let's go with a different name. Let's go with Lily. Hitting return, now nothing is echoed back to us. Instead, the user's input was assigned to the variable name. And we can check on that. We could say print name. And now we see that's Lily. Actually, let's try and greet the user in a little bit nicer way. Let's go with print and then say greetings and then the name and let's be emphatic about this and put an exclamation point. The string that we get, the output that we get, isn't quite right. We don't want that space between the exclamation point and the name. So recall that there was an optional argument that we had with the print function that controlled what was generated between the values that were associated with each argument. So I'm going to recall that previous command and we can use the optional sep argument and set that equal to the empty string and then everything would be just placed together with no space in between it. I'll hit return now. This won't be quite right. That doesn't look good. We want a space between greetings and lily. So let's recall that and let's put that space in the string literal readings space. And now that looks right. That's what we want. Now that we have Lily's name, let's be impolite and let's ask her age. Let's say age is equal to, we'll call the input function with a string argument of what is your age. And now hitting return, we get that prompt and we're told to enter an age. Let's say Lily is 19. And now what is age? It's been assigned the value 19. But something we have to pay attention to is that this is a string. If we tried to give Lily a birthday, say, add one to her age, we get an error. And if you look at that error, it says, we cannot convert the int object to a string implicitly. And this is mentioning an implicit conversion. And we've actually seen implicit 
conversion of one data type to another data type when we're dealing with arithmetic and we had integers and floats in an expression the integers were implicitly converted to floats we can't add strings in integers but maybe there's a way that we can convert strings to integer if we do it explicitly and that will be the subject of the next video